Suspense. Tonight, The Man Who Couldn't Lose, starring Gene Kelly. Suspense is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now, a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you... Suspense! This is The Man in Black. Tonight, from Hollywood, we bring you a star, Mr. Gene Kelly, in a suspense play by Emil C. Tepperman called... The Man Who Couldn't Lose. It is a tale of dawn till midnight in a man's life. A tale of murder and money and luck. Such luck as pursues a man once in a hundred years. But first, here is a message from your host, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. Roma wines made in California are of such uniformly superb quality that they are imported by many foreign countries as the choice of true connoisseurs of fine wines. Millions of Americans also enjoy the excellence of Roma wines daily, with meals and when entertaining. In fact, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. They know that Roma wines are truly inexpensive for wines of such distinguished character. They know Roma wines are of unvarying superb taste and quality, the result of age-old winemaking skill combined with modern knowledge. All this for only pennies a glass. So, for maximum mealtime enjoyment or when entertaining, serve Roma wine. A cool glass of appetizing Roma California sherry before dinner. A cool bottle of rich Roma California burgundy on the table with the meal. You'll appreciate the enthusiastic comments of the family and guests. You'll be pleasantly surprised at how much added zest Roma wine brings to your table. Tomorrow... Ask your dealer for R-O-M-A, Roma Wine. If he is temporarily out of Roma, please try again soon. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. And now with the man who couldn't lose, and with the performance of Gene Kelly as Leonard Snell, the lucky New Yorker, we again hope to keep you in suspense. You feeling all right now? Sure. Sure, I feel swell. You better not talk anymore, though. Oh, why not? I got nothing to worry about. That's what I'm telling you. Something's happened to me. I'm not scared. Just like old man Marsley said, it doesn't happen often, but when it does, well, it's happened to me. Something's happened to me that doesn't happen once in a hundred years. And it all happened in one day. Yeah. It began this morning. Leonard, don't try to kid me. You're not asleep. Get up. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Okay. I cook your breakfast. I come home and cook your dinner. In between, I work behind that counter all day until I'm so tired I can't hardly stand up. The least you can do is get up and drive me to work. Sure, I will. And what do you do? Nothing. Now, listen, please. You don't call what you do work, I hope. When did you last sell an insurance policy? When? I'll bet you can't even remember. I'm sure I can. All right, all right. And when you do get up enough energy to sell one once in a while, I never see the money. Horses, sweepstakes, tickets, and numbers, anything. Just so long as you can gamble it away. But do you ever bring a dollar home? Not that I ever hear anything. Ah, shut up. Don't you tell me to shut up, Leonard Smell. I pay the rent when it gets paid. I pay the grocery bill. I pay for everything. You'd think at least I'd get a little appreciation once in a while. I appreciate it. I hear about it enough. Well, why don't you do something about it then? Listen, Celia, I I don't feel so good today. Sure. That's what you said yesterday and the day before. That's what you always say every time anybody talks about work. Well, I'm sick and tired of it. You promised you were going to get a job this week, and you're going to do it. Celia, there's something i got to tell you. Oh, I suppose you want to wheedle some money out of me again. Well, if you can't even keep a little lunch money in your pocket... No, Celia, listen, it's more than that. It's... Oh, it is, is it? I suppose you got another hot tip on the races. Well, if you think I'm going to... Will you shut up? Well, listen, I'm not... Listen, Celia, I've sold quite a few insurance policies in the last six months. Oh, you have? 
have, have you? Well, where's the money? Oh, don't pull that on me. You're going to get a job. All right. I I spent the money. On the races? Yeah, only it wasn't all my money. What do you mean? I mean I'm $1,800 short, and this is the last day to settle up my accounts with the company. You you stole it. No, I I thought I was going to get it back and make a killing. I had some tips that were supposed to be sure things. Oh, Oh, I get it. $1,800. Quite a coincidence, isn't it? Well, seventeen hundred and three. What's the difference? And it just so happens that I have eighteen hundred dollars in a safe deposit box that Aunt May left me this spring. Quite a coincidence. Celia, I got to get that money back to them today. Well, I don't believe a word of it, and you're not going to get that money. If I don't, they can send me to jail. And if I did believe you, you wouldn't get it. Maybe a few months in jail would teach you a little consideration. You know, I got to have an operation sometime this fall. You think I want to go into a charity ward? Celia, they can give me five years. You've had your eye on that money ever since you heard I got it. But you're not going to get it. Why do you think I wear the key to that safe deposit box around my neck? Celia. I suppose you think I haven't noticed. Celia, I suppose you think I don't know all those times you tried to get that chain off my neck when you thought I was asleep. Celia, will you... I wasn't quite as sleepy as you thought, mister. All right, Celia. And don't think you can wheel it out of me. All right, Celia. Len. Len, get away from me. Len. I knew I'd have to do that to you someday. I bent over her. She was dead, all right. The key was on that little chain around her neck, just like it had always been. I yanked on the chain, and it snapped, and the key came away in my hand. I shaved and got dressed, and then I went to a purse. It was nine dollars and some change and the usual junk, and that Irish sweepstake ticket made out in the name of I'm a Winner. I put the money in my pocket and the ticket in my wallet. I was all set to go now, except for writing the letter. All of a sudden, I realized that what I was doing didn't seem strange to me at all. It was like one of those dreams where you think it's all happened before sometime. I wrote through the police. I have killed my wife in a fit of anger. I can't go on living anymore after doing a thing like that to Celia. I'm short in my account, too, so there's only one thing for me to do. Don't bother looking for me. By the time you get this letter, you can find me in the city morgue. Yours truly, Leonard Snell. Leonard! Oh, Leonard! Oh, oh, good morning, Mr. Mosley. Leonard! I just had some great news. I knew you'd want to hear about it right away. Well, uh, I'm in sort of a hurry this morning. Uh, all Mr. right, all right. Well, you hear this. You know that picric acid dye formula I've been working on? Yeah, yeah. The government's just bought an option on it. They're going to try it out under factory conditions. And when they do, well, my boy, it'll be worth a million dollars. Well, what do you know? <laughs> That's really great. Well, I guess so I've got to be... I have decided to take out that annuity you've been trying to sell me. Got an application with you? You... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Come on inside. Oh, hello there, Leonard. Good morning. Why, my land, you look as though you've just seen a ghost or something. <laughs> just sold a policy. You don't sell them like that every day, do you, my boy? What's that first premium? About uh, $3,400, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there's a nice commission in that, eh, Leonard? About $1,800, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Eighteen. Well, Leonard certainly deserves it. Oh, yeah. He works very hard. I see him coming home every evening with that briefcase and all those papers under his arm. Uh, most of those papers are the racing forms, aren't they, Leonard? Well, I... <laughs> well, now, my boy. Oh, watch out for those bottles. Picric acid. You know, I, I've been watching you, Leonard. You've had a hard time. But you're a gambler. You believe a lot in luck. Well, now, I've got a theory about luck. Yeah. Now, uh, wh- when were you born? Huh? Oh, uh, March 1st, 1878. Yes, sir, luck is something that can come in big doses sometimes, almost as though fate had planted out ahead of time. Uh-huh. Who's the beneficiary? Oh, my wife, of course. There's a perfectly good mathematical explanation for it. Of course, a number of unrelated events converge, and they all add up to the good fortune of a single man. Happens once in a century, perhaps, but it does happen. Uh-huh. Uh, you can make the check out. Uh... Uh, oh, well, of course. Oh, why don't I make it out to you personally? Then I can collect that three months' rent you owe me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, why, sure, sure. That, that that'll be thirty two hundred and fifty five dollars. Oh, fine, fine. I'll make it right out. You know, Leonard, I was saying to Sam just this morning 
I'm almost as glad for your sake as for ours. My, won't see you be surprised. Huh? I said, won't see you be surprised. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, where is she? She usually leaves for work long before this. And I always hear her. Well, I see. Uh... Oh, Leonard, don't tell me there's anything wrong. I know she hasn't been feeling well lately. Oh, oh, oh no, no. Uh, she, uh, she's got a little headache, you know. Oh, poor thing. Why didn't you tell me? I'll go right upstairs. Oh, no, some... no, no, you better not. Uh, she told me she wanted to sleep. She, she's asleep now. Oh, well, then I won't bother her. Well, my boy, you should check. Thanks. Now, don't play that on the races. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> but you keep playing your luck just the same. Now, luck is a funny thing. You had a lucky start today. Maybe your luck has changed. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it has. Why couldn't he have signed it yesterday? That's all I could think of for a couple of minutes. Why couldn't he sign it yesterday? That was done now. So I got in the car and drove downtown. First, I went to Celia's bank and got that 1800 out of the deposit box. Nobody said a word. Then I went to Mossley's bank and cashed his check. I had over five grand now. I drove over towards the park. A clock in the jewelry store said 10.15. That was plenty of time. Park, I stopped and gave him once over to the bum sitting around on the benches in the sun. There's always a bunch of them there. Pretty soon, I see a guy that looks about right. Hey, hey, you! Me? Yeah, you want to make five bucks? You mean a job? Oh, you won't have to strain yourself. I just hurt my wrist. I can't drive. I got to go uptown to meet a guy. Want to drive me? Oh, okay. You got a license? Yeah. Yeah, I got a license. Let's see it. Okay. Here. Hmm. Floyd Eustace. Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> You're uh, kind of a long way from home, aren't you? Yeah. But it's okay to drive with in this state if you've got a licensed driver with you. Okay, Floyd Eustace. You'll do. <laughs> Get in the car and head uptown. My luck is holding all right. This guy couldn't have been better if I'd looked a week. I see another clock, and it's only a little past 10.30 now. I still got lots of time, so I decide to clean up the details now. How am I doing? Okay, but uh, turn right at the next block, Floyd. I want to go by the 43rd Street Post Office and mail a letter. Sure. You could mail it at a letterbox, though. Yeah, but, uh, well, I don't want to mail it at a letterbox. Oh, Okay. I go into the post office and get a stamp and mail a letter. The letter I tell about killing Sheila is just addressed to the police commissioner, 21 Center Street. Somehow I just don't trust the letter box because if the police don't get that letter right on time and start looking, it's not so good. I go out and get in the car and tell Floyd Eustace where to go. We head uptown and after a while we get to Fort Tryon Park right up above Riverside Drive looking over the river. Hardly ever anybody up there at this time of year, so I feel pretty safe. Sure enough, there wasn't. I got the monkey wrench out, and I had it in my hand. This right? Yeah. Just pull over there up against the rail. Gee, I've never been up here. Must be quite a drop down there. A couple of hundred feet, huh? Uh-huh. This where you're supposed to meet the guy? Yeah. Right here. I dragged him into the back seat and took off all his clothes, and then all mine. I changed clothes with him right down to the underwear and socks. I put all my papers in his pocket. My license, old man Mossley's application, and my wallet, the work. Then I dragged him up front again, behind the wheel. Then there was something else I had to do that I didn't like much either, but, but I couldn't take any chances. I held his head back against the seat and raised the monkey wrench again. I hit him in the face. I hit him a lot. Stand back now. Stand back. I tell you, officer, it didn't land more than three feet from me. Not more than three feet. What happened? This car just rolled off the Palisades up there somehow and landed smack in the middle of the street. Gee, look at his face. He must have gone right through the windshield. Poor fella. Guy named Snell. Leonard Snell. I was free. I was free of Celia and all her belly aching. I was free to do anything I wanted. I had five grand in my pocket, and the cops had Leonard Snell's body down in the morgue, just like I told them they wouldn't have let her. Oh, my luck was holding, but good. 
I went over to the 181st Street bus station. It was a bus leaving for Boston in 20 minutes. I bought a ticket. Then I got a paper in the corner and went into the cafeteria there and sat down at the counter. I was pretty hungry. What's yours? Uh, scrambled eggs with bacon, french fries, orange juice, and coffee. And, uh... I, I gotta catch a bus. It won't take long, will it? No longer than it takes an egg to scramble. Oh, oh. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Well, there, well, that's all right, Mike. I, I like to read a newspaper while I eat myself. Uh-huh. Kind of aids the digestion, I find. Yeah. Here's your orange juice. Thanks. Oh, dear. Some guys have all the luck, don't they? Hmm? I said some guys have all the luck. I was just noticing in your paper there about those Irish sweet steak winners. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Some. Uh, what's the matter? You feel bad? Have all of luck. When I came to, somebody was swabbing my head with water. I paid my check and got out of there somehow and looked at the paper again. That's what it said, all right. I'm a winner, draws favorite in Irish sweets. My ticket. And I went on to say how it was worth at least 40000 and maybe 150000 for horse one. And all of a sudden, I was standing there cursing and swearing at Celia, right out loud, just as though she was alive. So I saw people were staring at me, and I stopped. Oh, if it hadn't have been for her, I'd have $40,000. $40,000! Now, now that $40,000 was just a one-way ticket to the hot seat. Because that $40,000 belonged to Leonard Snell, and that Irish sweet ticket was in Leonard Snell's wallet. And Leonard Snell's wallet was in the pocket of that bum that was supposed to be me. Why, now the cops would have it along with the rest of Leonard Snell's stuff down at headquarters after they put the body in the morgue. Uh, well, I still had my five grand and a bus ticket to Boston. You can't get all the brakes all the time, was what I figured then. So I got in the bus. I have plenty of seats in the rear. Is this seat taken? No, not at all. Sit right down. Thanks. Well, well, somebody must be feeling pretty good this afternoon. Huh? The guy that's got that there, I'm a winner. That ticket on the sweep. I see it says there they pay him $40,000 for it right now. $40,000. Yeah. I'd sure like to be in his shoes, wouldn't you? Yeah. And I see it says there... Yeah, do you want to read it? Well, you don't need to get sore. Ah, uh, skip it. I... Holy... What? All oh, Hey, hey, stop! Hey, let me out. i got to get out of here. <laughs> Will you make up your mind? <laughs> I don't have to make up my mind, brother. I don't have to make up my mind! right then that I got the idea what was happening. It was just like old man Mosley said. It may only happen once in a hundred years, but it was happening to me. Oh, my luck was riding high, and when your luck is like that, you just can't lose. Because there it was, right in the paper again, on page three. Freak explosion in Brooklyn kills three, and it was my house. And the people killed were Mosley and his wife and Celia. <laughs> They thought it was caused by old Mosley's chemicals or something. I didn't know. I didn't care. All I knew was they thought Celia had been killed by the explosion in the fire. And I was in the clear. I could walk into the police station, get my sweepstakes ticket, collect that 40000 be set for life. Oh, I knew just what I was going to tell them. It was a lead pipe stick. I was walking on air all the way to the police station. I was going up the steps. And then I stopped. Because I just remembered something terrible. And if I remembered it ten seconds later, I'd have walked right into the electric chair. I remembered the letter. I was let. I'm warning the cops that have that letter. Telling how I killed Celia. That letter that I'd taken all the trouble to mail at the 43rd Street Post Office so I'd be sure to get off all right. Oh, well, even worse this time than I had before because it seemed like I'd almost had that money right in my hand. I was pretty shaky. I went into a bar to get a drink. Yes, sir, what'll it be? A double rye. All right, sir. Like a little chaser on the side, huh? No. Now, that'll be... Just uh... leave the bottle. Oh, yes, sir. Now we bring you five minutes of the latest news. Hey, Jordan Martin. Up, will you? Yeah, sure. New York City. In one of the most daring holdups in the annals of New York crime... A gang of armed men this noon robbed the United States mail truck just as it was leaving the 43rd Street Post Office, removing eight sacks of mail and the entire morning collection of the post office. Apparently, the gunmen were after a shipment of currency destined for the Federal Reserve Bank. But according to officials, the joke is on the gangsters. All they got was the regular mail. Oh, oh, 
Hey, 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 I knew it had happened now. I couldn't lose. I simply couldn't lose. Because those mugs that stuck up that mail truck had got my letter. Nothing in the world could stop me now. Officer. Officer, I, I just been held up. Held up, huh? Yeah. Well, what happened? Well, I, I, I picked up a guy who asked me for a lift about it. 225th Street and Broadway. Yeah. I was driving along by Van Cortland Park when suddenly grabbed me. And he, he hit me with something. That's all I remember until I woke up lying in the park. My car was gone, and then I found how to take my wallet. My money will ever stay. I see. What's your name? Leonard Snell. I, I Leonard would... Snell? Yeah, that's right. Oh. Uh, say, Lieutenant. Yeah? This gentleman is Mr. Leonard Snell. He was held up this morning, and his car was stolen. Uh, just sit in here, will you, Snell? Why? Sure. Uh, sit down. Hi. I, uh, got some news for you, Mr. Snell. Did you find my car? Well, yes, but, uh... Well, you haven't seen the papers today? Not since this morning. I, uh, got some good news and some bad news for you, Mr. Snell. Maybe I'd better tell you the bad news first. Pretty bad. Go ahead. Your wife was killed this morning, Mr. Snell, in a fire at your home. My wife? Killed? <laughs> and this probably won't interest you much under the circumstances, Mr. Snell, but you've drawn a <laughs> ticket worth $40,000 in the Irish Free State. <laughs> Win the Irish Free State and then lose your wife the same day. <laughs> Some people sure have all the hard luck in the world. Luck. Luck. Within about 15 minutes, more things were happening to me than can happen to most guys in a dozen lifetimes. And then comes a jackpot I've been waiting for. Yeah, I wish you could hold that. Well, hold it, Mr. Snell. Just, hold that, that pose right there. there. Your face, uh, just Mr. one more, Snell, Mr. Snell, please. If you care to make a statement, Mr. Snell, would you mind telling the public how you feel? I know it's pretty tough, but if you could just make a statement. Please, fellas, please. Please give us a break, will you? I, I hate to trouble you at this time, Mr. Snell, but the, the banking syndicate I represent is prepared to offer you $40,000 in cash for your sweepstakes ticket. I, I have the money right here in cash. All right, but I, I don't care much about the money now. That was at 4.30. By 6, I have $45,000 in my pocket. And I'm registered at the Waldorf and sitting down to dinner. I'll uh, take the plank steak, please, medium. Yes, sir. I'll have you order very shortly. Hello, Carl. Mind if I sit down? Oh. Oh, you a reporter? Not exactly. I'm a sort of a collector. You owe me 40 grand, pal, and I come to collect. Now. 40? Why, I don't know. Oh, yes, you do, pal. Remember that little letter you wrote to the police commissioner this morning? That you mailed at the 43rd Street Post Office? Remember that? Some friends of mine found it. They figure it's worth just about 40 grand. You? You're one of the guys that suck at that milk. You want to make something of it? There's a big reward. There's a cop right outside the hotel. Kind of figured you'd play ball. Where's the letter? My friend's got it right outside my car. You still got that dough in your case? Like the paper said? Yeah. Come on. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're a pretty lucky guy at that, pal. Huh? Suppose somebody else has got that letter. Don't worry, pal. You'll see what it's made with me. Here. Here's a car. Is that the car, Frankie? Yeah, and he's acting real reasonable, too. Get up the cash, pal. You recognize the letter, don't you? Yeah, here's your money. And here's your letter. Only don't try anything funny because we still know what that letter says. And the cops could always dig up the body and find out how, well, how your old lady really kicked off. Couldn't it? I think it gets the idea. So long, pal. Paralyzed or something. You. Yeah? You go call an ambulance. I'll stand by this man here. Okay. What's up, Jerry? We just had a little shooting match with those mail robbers. The other boys got him down the street, but this poor man was shot when they fired back. Hey. What's this letter here in the street? Addressed uh, to the police commissioner. No. The fellow that shot had it no. in his hand before he fell. 
Uh, you better open it. It might be evidence. Right. No. 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 What? Uh, uh, no. Leonard Snell again. <laughs> better put a guard on Snell at the hospital, Jerry. From the looks of this letter, he's going to stand trial for murder. <laughs> better not talk anymore, Mr. Snell. What's the difference? What's the difference how much I talk? That's what I wanted to tell him. Well, if they get the letter, I'll never go to trial. Because I got luck. Don't you see? It comes once in a hundred years and I got it. I got that kind of luck. And when you got that kind of luck, you can't lose. You can't lose. Ah, you can't lose. Oh, you still here? Yeah, I got a guard that fellow Snell as long as he's here in the hospital. But did you ever see the light of it? I don't suppose one man ever had so much luck in one day in the whole wide world. Ah, uh, well, I guess his luck has played out now, all right, though. It's funny. He said, you can't lose. Well, he's wrong there. Look at that lad is going to fry. Just as sure as my name is Jerry Malone. No, you're wrong, Jerry. His luck is still good. What? He's dead. And so closes The Man Who Couldn't Lose, starring Gene Kelly. Tonight's study in Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Have you discovered, as so many thousands of Americans have, how much Roma wines add to the enjoyment of your meals? How their superb taste makes special occasion feasts out of everyday meals? Find out for yourself. What a marvel worker Roma Wine can be in giving any meal new compliment-rousing zest. Start off the meal with an appetizer, Roma California Sherry. Then place on the table a cool bottle of Roma California Burgundy. You'll be amazed at the tremendous difference Roma Wine makes in the enjoyment of your food. Don't overlook this easy way to add extra enjoyment to everyday living at a cost of only pennies a glass. Take a tip from the millions who enjoy Roma wines at meals when entertaining. Ask for R-O-M-A, Roma wines. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. Gene Kelly appeared through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor production Kismet. Next Thursday, same time... You will hear Mr. John Hodiak as star of Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.